I don't. I don't. You, do you know what? The, what are we gonna do with Rue? What are we gonna do with Rue after this episode? What's going on, to all my Euphoria fans? And happy Euphoria Sunday! Elliot back again here from Movie Files, breaking down season two of Euphoria, episode five, which was titled "Stand Still, Like the Mockingbird." This was a Rue heavily focused Rue episode, and we got a little bit of tea that we'll talk about with Cassie and Maddie and find out about the truth and just where do we go from here. We're going to break it all down here in this spoiler review, but before we do so, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, we are on the quest to 20,000 subscribers, so if you want to be a part of this awesome community, make sure you're subscribed, you're hitting that notification bell, and as you can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed the review, we'll make sure to give it a thumbs up and also share the review. But more importantly, once you've seen this fifth episode of Euphoria, what, what are we going to do with Rue? How, where are you all at with Rue right now in this show? Are you just hands being dried off and clean? You're done with the character? Do you still have hope for the character? Where do we go from here? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So just a quick reminder, as I talk about every single Sunday, uh, we will be going live on February 6th, this Sunday tonight as this review drops, which happens to be my birthday. But we will be going live, myself and two special guests, 9.15 p.m. Central Time, really diving deep into this episode and what we hope to see in the future episode. So I'll leave the link in for the stream in the description below. So I hope you all can join us. We have such a good time. So I hope you all can join us but listen man i i we're gonna get into the episode but i will say as you all probably know as you can see on the screen now euphoria did get renewed for its third season which a couple questions i have for you all number one i'm excited let me know your excitement level for season three i'm so glad they gave us this announcement which to me means we don't have to wait another two years for the show and we all know why the show was delayed because of everything that was going on in the world and still is going on in the world but i'm to assume if they gave us this announcement this at this point of season two the midway point we're probably going to get season three i would say in the summertime of 2023 which i hope or maybe even sooner but i would imagine summer maybe into you know early you know uh, uh fall maybe but i'm expecting to come next year but the question i have how many more seasons do you think we'll get of the show now i know a lot of you are like i want to see them grow old and have this show forever but realistically for me I can see this going maybe four, maybe five before it starts to get redundant. Honestly, probably four, if I'm being honest with you. But do you all want to see them in high school, go into college, be adults? Let me know how much of euphoria do you want to see. But again, season three puts a smile on my face, and I'm excited for it to be with us sometime next year. But man, 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 let's let's just get into it. This episode to me really kind of sums up season two so far for me. There are things in this episode that were fantastic. Performances, uh, you know, the, uh, the the narrative with Rue, just being a chaos from everyone's life. All this stuff was fantastic. But then there are moments in the episode where I'm just like, and this is how I feel about the season so far, where are we going? <laughs> what is the end game with this particular season? So a lot of great stuff with this episode that I enjoyed. There's some stuff I question. We're going to break it all down. But let me know where you all are at with this episode in the comments as we get into this breakdown. First thing you notice, no music. It's just pure acting. So you ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. As we hear Rue and her mom in the background arguing, her mom saying, I'm not mad at you, baby. I'm not mad at you. And Rue assumes that her mom knows about the weed she's, she told Gia that she's taking. So she goes into Gia's room and like, you snitch. Why'd you tell mom this, that, and the other? She tells her, I didn't tell her, Rue. I didn't tell her. And her mom tells her it, it wasn't, you know, your sister. It wasn't Gia. It was Jules that told me. And immediately it clicks in Rue's head. The suitcase. She goes into her room. She looks for the suitcase, and unfortunately, it's gone. It is gone, and we we find out what happened to that suitcase here in a bit. But it's in this moment where I believe the actress' name, correct me if I'm wrong, is Nika uh, King, who plays Leslie, the mother of Gia and Rue. She gets her moment to shine. Like when I think of like the Oscars and the Emmy, and they have like the package, like the scene that gets that person nominated or the big scene in the moment. This is that moment for me. She has her moment as her and Rue at this point. Rue is pushing the phone out of her hand as she says she's going to call the police. And you know, she pushes her mom, and Rue looks at her and he looks at Rue back and say, I raised you. I'm not afraid of you. And the way Rue was looking at her mom, I'm telling you this right now. 
I was raised in a different time. I grew up in the 90s. And, and if I were to look at my mom, the way Rue was looking at her mom, staring her down after that confrontation they had, I'm telling you right now, I would not be celebrating my birthday today. I wouldn't be in front of this camera. I'm just being real with you all. But it's just a different time, right? And her parenting skills are much different than some of the parents I've seen growing up and, and know now. But, you know, leave it to Rue as she, you know, her mom says she's not a good person. And I agree with that. And we see Rue as she constantly does when she feels kind of cornered. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't just like take it in and just reflect on what's going on. She wants to hurt you harder. She wants to cut deep as she brings up her dad's death and goes into her mom's parenting, which to be fair, I'm not saying Leslie is a bad mom, but she, some questionable moments as a mom. Like I don't, I still don't know why Rue has a door on her, on her bedroom with all the, the mistakes she's made in the past. But this is a little bit of truth of what Rue is saying, but neither here nor there. We we go into this moment here, and this is where things get physical, get violent, and get, you know, again, just the acting in this moment. Like, I don't think there was any stunt devils when they were pushing each other, slapping each other. I think that was real and just, like, honest acting, in my opinion. But Rue's yelling at Gia at this point about Gia's future. Like, oh, you know, you're going to be a disappointment like I am, this, that, and the other. She pushes Gia back on her bed, which leaves Leslie like, don't fucking touch her, and she slaps her pushes her out the room, and I mean Zendaya, I wonder how many takes that was, I hope it was one take, because she's kicking the door, bashing the door, inevitably she breaks the door down to get in the room, and again, the yelling continues, the the, the back and forth, the name calling continues, and she, you know, Rue gets to this point, and again, she's just, she knows, she knows how to manipulate people, right, especially her loved ones, she goes into saying, you wish I was different, so do I, you hate me, so do I, as we see her continuously looking for that suitcase and it's nowhere to be found baby girl because we learn in a very quick moment here as Rue now again she's high she's low she's back she's four she's just all over the place she's chaotic she sits down she starts bawling her eyes out she's apologizing to them and she she doesn't she says she doesn't want to be here anymore as she said you know several times and she she never feels like she's going to get clean and then she acts where is the suitcase? And we hear it out of the, the corner of the room. It's not here, Rue. It's we, we flush the drugs down the toilet. And it's not Gia. It's not Leslie. It's Jules that's saying this to her. And the embarrassment on Rue's face when she realizes that Jules has been here the whole time, which I'm just thinking, okay, timeline-wise. So I, I went back. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. We, last time we saw Rue was last episode when she was, you know, was dancing. She had the moment with her dad. So this is the next morning. So she's just waking up from that moment that we thought that she potentially OD'd. But, ooh, that, that embarrassment, that face of embarrassment, Zendaya played that perfectly. But cut into the living room. We see that not only, <laughs> Jules, this wasn't a good move. Not only was Jules there. But, uh, you know, Mr. Still Your Girl himself, a.k.a. Elliot, is in the room, and Rue goes straight over to him and, you know, muffs him upside his head and, you know, calls him an addict. How can you believe, you know, you're calling me this, and he's an addict himself, and, you know, like I said, she muffs him in the head. And now she's face to face with Jules and who's never seen. Now, you know, if you guys have seen Jules as special, we know that she's had a mom. I don't know how to what extent her mom was an addict. I don't know if it was similar to Rue's moments when she didn't have her drugs. She got physical with her dad or maybe even Jules. But we see, you know, this is the first time Jules has ever seen Rue in this position. And, you know, she tells Rue, tells Jules, you're dead to me. I don't want to see you ever again. Again, we everything we've had, I, I just want to erase it. I don't want to see you anymore. And she said, I, she ultimately tells her, all the mistakes I've done, my number one mistake, my number one regret was meeting you because she goes into calling her a vampire, sucking every joy and everything out of people. And when she says that she loves Rue, she doesn't really mean that. She just loves the idea of loving Rue. And just she's just bashing her. She's, she's telling her everything that she may probably feel about Jules, but still there's a way way to go about it and the way that Rue went about it was just terrible in my opinion and I and I, and I honestly genuinely even though I'm like Jules bringing Elliot was a stupid ass idea and, and the stuff she's been doing with sneaking behind her back is you know unexplainable for sure but I still feel bad for Jules at that moment but cutting back to Jules she continues to tell her that she loves her and Rue tells her that she left her at her lowest point and 
this is that's the moment, right? When we know in season one, when she left at a train station, that's when she relapsed. Well, she already had relapsed prior to that, but she was clean for a minute, and then she went back to her lowest point. So she walks out of the room, and again, just let me know how you all are feeling at that position. Did you, did you feel bad for Jules? How do you feel about Elliot at that moment? Let me know where you all are at in this scene. But Elliot says to himself, "I should have never said anything. I like Rue the way she was. I should have stayed out of it." Which how do you all feel about that? Do you feel Elliot did the right thing in telling Jules and in return Jules telling the mom? I think it was the right thing. No doubt about it. But let me know how you, was it his position to do so? Let me know how you all feel. Because if I'm being honest with you all, if Jules didn't know she was back on drugs, let alone her mom, there's some questionable things about those people if they can't physically see that she was back on drugs. But let me know what you all think about Elliot. Was it the right decision? I personally think it is. So he doesn't make, he hasn't been, you know, the most trustworthy person this season, but he made the right decision in my opinion. But Leslie, still being the mom that she wants to be and take care of her daughter, she says, you know, let's take you to the ER. She goes in the room, says she misses her dad. By the way, there's no excuse, you know, I, I sympathize with Rue. I'm not making excuses for her. I, I could definitely sympathize why she is being the way she is. And missing her dad makes sense, but again, it makes no excuse for her actions, especially from, you know, what she's been doing to her loved ones. But we, we see them get in the car. She looks at Elliot, you know, he looks at her as they're going on to the ER, or at least she thinks he's going to the ER, but it's not over. It's, this is this episode should have been called, if you ever seen the movie Run, Lola, Run, this should have been called Run, Rue, run because she was just running all over the city but Rue tells them that she relapsed as soon as she got out and you know she learns that she's not going to the ER she's going to rehab which obviously Rue is not happy about this her mom goes into the whole five percent statistic about going into rehab and believing in herself she can do anything she sets her mind to Rue throws it back at her like yeah every parent says that especially the ones that you know end up in the grave which is like Rue can can you just breathe can you just take in some good positivity but no she she was on a mission and this episode in the stages of Rue in this episode as she gets out of the car and runs into traffic not once but multiple times in this episode Rue is just again run Rue run and and that's the intro again there's so much that I took away from that intro and there's so much I enjoyed about the intro and seeing Rue at her lowest Jewel seeing Rue Elliot telling the truth all that stuff worked for me um and and I'm honestly not done with Rue there's some terrible stuff she's doing. I, I just want her to get clean. I don't know if it's possible, but my question for you all is, what do you think about the intro? How are you feeling about Rue and everything that went down? Let's talk about that in the comments, but let's move on as it's now nighttime and Rue is sleeping in the alley. Her leg seems to be all cramped up and, I, and I don't, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, but she was looking like a straight like dope head throughout this, the rest of this episode. So she makes her way over to Lexi's house again. She was just on a mission. She's like, okay, if my life is messed up, these suitcases, you know, I don't know what Lori's going to do to me. I'm about to start messing up everyone else's life, you know? She goes to Lexi's house, and, you know, everyone's giving her a hug. We got Maddie, we got Lexi, we got Cass, and then leave it to Susie, who's just at this point, hey, Rue, how's your mom? You know, you look you look pretty bad. Um, are you an AA or NA? Because I went to AA. Just, Susie is just like, this is that type of mom, right? And she's probably drunk on her ass knowing her. But we see, again, Rue, again, just looking for drugs. She's just looking to get high. She goes into the bathroom, steals some jewelry. She can't find any pills. She walks out her mom is there and you know Cass Cassie why did you have to say something you could have just 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 been observant just watch what's going on like your sister Lexi just be quiet and watch what's going on don't say anything Cassie unfortunately says you know Rue you can make it one day it's just taking a day at a time she reg she's gonna regret saying that because um this is Rue's response hey Cass Cassie how long have you been sleeping with Nate Jacobs Mm, mm, mm. Ah, Cassie, you could have you could have just went and and hung out and just maybe been quiet, but nope, the truth is out. Thanks to no thanks, I should say to Rue. I was always anticipating that she was going to find out during the play or maybe next episode, but. Here's the moment. Here is the moment. And whether it be late Lexi putting her hand on her face, Kat's reaction, Susie asking, to put the conversation aside, but it's Maddie in this scene that just had me on another one. As Maddie, and, and this is the same Maddie. We got to remember, this is the Maddie that's been bashing people's heads into the locker since she was eight years old. How will she react? Well, 
Here's her reaction. And, and before we get into her reaction, I just want to kind of know from you all in the comments now, the placement of the reveal of Maddie finding out about Cass and Nate. Are you okay with how it was revealed? Or do you feel like it took away from Rue's moment and Rue's kind of episode of her going through this, you know, withdrawals? Was it placed well? How do you feel about it? I'm kind of indifferent about it. I almost, uh, I'm glad we finally got the reveal because I don't want it to, I didn't want to continue to drag on. I honestly thought it was going to be revealed in the play, but how do you all feel about the placement and the reveal of that? Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? Did it take away from Rue's scene? Did it take away from that moment from those three characters? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. But going back to the moment, Cassie, who's crying, obviously we know she's very emotional, and to Maddie's disapproval of her crying, she's trying to, you know, we see Cass saying, you believe her? She's a drug addict. <laughs> okay, Cass, speaking the truth, but Maddie tries to keep from getting violent, and uh, you know, she's trying to hold it all in, and, and we see Rue's mom's like, you guys, just take it outside. If you're talking, if we ain't talking about Rue right now, it don't really matter, but Maddie, she goes ahead and just goes right to the source, uh, which is Rue. Rue, how long has this been going on? As Rue tells her since New Year's Eve, as obviously Maddie's starting to put the pieces together, she chases Cass into her room, which I wonder if we're gonna, like next episode, because again, I don't see the previews, is it gonna be, are we gonna see next episode from that perspective? Like, did she beat Cassie's ass? Is Cassie still gonna be alive next week? I guess we'll see. But again, let me know how you all felt about the reveal. But in the mix of all this commotion, this is where Rue, again, is on a mission. She runs to the next person she's gonna try to poison, which is Fez, which I'm surprised Fez wasn't the first person she went to. But Rue's like, oh, can I go to the bathroom? And, and I'm surprised Fez, because Fez knows what she looks like at her lowest point. I'm surprised he let her in the house, but he does. She goes into the bathroom, sneaks out of the bathroom, goes into Grandma G's, you know, gangster grandma's uh, bathroom, can't open the pills. Fez goes in the bathroom like, come on, Rue, it's just a principal, Rue. My boy Fez is speaking the truth because Rue tries to go WWE like she went on her mom and Gia. And Fez is like, oh, hell no, we ain't doing this today. Grabs her and rightfully so throws her out. You know, Fez is like, you I already got a killer in my house. I got, you know, my, my, my brother Ashtray who's ready to snap at any point. I got Cal out there, Nate out there. I got Mouse's baby mama out there. The last thing I need is a crackhead in my house taking my grandma's pills. So he did the right thing and throwing her out. So shout out to Fez, always coming through, right? But listen, at this point, Rue's out of her mind. She sees this couple who's going out for a date or whatever. I don't think we've ever seen these characters. I think they're just literally random characters. But they're leaving their house. The garage is slowly opening, which makes it, you know, Rue sneaks into their house and she runs to this big ass Cujo dog, which luckily for her, I believe the dog name was Harold, was a very friendly puppy. I'm like, that ain't no goddamn puppy. That's a full on, you know, adult. But the dog is friendly and she's here to steal some shit, which she actually does. She goes to the safe, which the password, the passcode was like 1111, opens it, you know, and by this point, the, I believe his name was, uh, Caleb or something. I can't remember the guy's name, but they're at the house now. And, and, you know, he sees her or Gabe, maybe run Lola run. Like I said, run, Rue run. She runs, but she runs into the police, which the police see her. They ask if she's okay. She throws up. And again, she's just for someone that's, you know, uh, with withdrawal has a cramp, probably hasn't eaten all day. Probably hasn't even, she hasn't slept all day. <laughs> she was running. She was running through alleys and houses and crashing people's, I think it was a quinceanera. She was packing, you know, crashing someone's barbecue, running in and out of people's houses. I mean, she's just, a, a what do they say, a bull run through a china shop? That was Rue in this episode, just ruining people's lives. And then she runs in the middle of the street yet again in the middle of goddamn traffic and causes a car accident. This is like, someone needs to grab her and just put her in a cage. <laughs> Not a cage. I'm being funny, but man, she was a mess in this episode. But she's just, just ruining everything. She she gets away from the cops, who the cops were just buffoons. They reminded me of like stormtroopers. They not they didn't shoot at her, obviously. But it's like, come on, you guys can't catch her. Neither here nor there. She's in the trash can, which kind of represents where she's at right now, which is the bottom of the trash. She is just a terrible person in this episode. But at this point, Rue gathers her thoughts and like, you know what, it'll be a good idea for me to go to Lori's house. So she makes her way to Lori's house with a thousand dollars worth of stolen jewelry and like two thousand dollars worth of cash. And Lori, who says she's never gotten angry before, it seems to be pretty even killed at this point. I, I still can't figure her out because she is just such a weird individual. But she goes into obviously she knew that Rue was lying about her sobriety. And then we get more of Lori's backstory, which again, this is the stuff in episode where I'm just like, I don't know how to feel about this. Like I, I 
feel like this show is, it tries, or this season is trying to blend in the satire of the situation, which kind of takes away from the situation when you have a character like Lori who's just kind of like, I can't really describe her personality, just a character that just is like too even keeled and like doesn't fit the tone of the show at points, but either here or there, we get her backstory. She's a, a past college athlete who had an injury, who got addicted to drugs, who lost her family, which got her into teaching, which then she becomes the person that we know her as today, which like I called her, you know, in episode one, Heisenberg, but Lori goes into Rue and her brain and how the opiates over time decrease her happiness and goes on and on about Rue. Uh, and, and while Rue's talking, she's looking at that closet like, yeah, I hear you, Lori, but those drugs are calling my name. That's what I'm listening to in the other room. But And as this scene's going on, I don't know if you all heard Lori, but she suggested, you know, you are a woman, Rue. Maybe you can use your body to get what you need. So I don't know if that's where things might lead to, body trafficking, you know, her selling herself for sex to pay for the money that she owes Lori because she did not give her the money she was wanting with that, you know, that deal they made. So... Either here nor there, at this point, I didn't know if Lori was going to snap, kill her, get her boyfriend and beat her up, but no, she seems to be a concerning adult as she's taking care of Rue and, and the giving her a bath and ultimately gives her morphine. Rue going through this moment where she sees herself, at, and this was a, a good moment and a sentimental moment, and again, I, I sympathize with her because I've lost someone close to me, and I kind of know I didn't go down that path as Rue, but I can kind of understand her sadness right so we see her as a young baby her dad with her you know going to the speech where she was at the wake and in the, the different moments she shared without her dad like in particularly seeing her young sister Gia and she says this really great quote which just kind of broke my heart when she says this memories exist outside of time no beginning or end and you know he'll always be there for her so a really great moment back to back weeks where we see her we know how much her dad meant to her and how important he was in her life and obviously him leaving kind of again doesn't make an excuse but it kind of was her beginnings of her downhill spiral when he got cancer and ultimately died so a really sad and quieter moment that I really enjoyed with this episode but lead us to the next morning Rue awaking into Lori's house and you know she's surveying the house homeboy from episode one is to sleep but he has a gun you know Rue and quiet does not coexist because she was just making all types of noise dropping the keys you know heavy ass feet on the ground she can't get out of the house because it's locked from within makes her way to Lori's room with her boyfriend. She ultimately sneaks out of the window, which I'm just like, you know, she is Tom Holland's girlfriend because she was very Spider-Man or Spider-Woman at this moment as she climbs out of the house, uh, the apartment, makes her way out of the complex. Yet again, she's on the run and we kind of wrap up the episode where we see Rue, her mom, Lisa, who's probably been up worried as hell for her daughter. We hear the door open, the door closes, and we see uh, Leslie say, Rue, is it her? Is it, you know, Jules wondering where Rue is? I think it's pretty safe to say it's probably Rue. But again, just summarizing this review here and just summarizing my thoughts on the episode, beginning was fantastic. Seeing the struggle, seeing the, the gaslighting, seeing the, the, the doing whatever she can to get out of the situation, to get the drugs and, and, and all the acting between, you know, uh, Nakia and Stormy Reed and Zendaya was fantastic. The embarrassment on Rue's face when she found out that Jules was there. The horrible, mean, you know, just rude stuff she was saying to Jules. Will they be able to, you know, coexist come in the rest of the season? Who knows what's going to happen with Elliot now? Is Elliot and Jules a thing now? So we'll find out. Then again, I'm happy that Maddie knows the truth, but where do we go now? Will we pick up with that moment? Is she beat Cassie's ass? How would they resolve the situation? Will she, out of retaliation, leak that tape or put the tape out to the internet involving Cal and obviously Jules, speaking of Cal, you know, we got two straight weeks of Cal. Where was he in this episode? I know he said goodbye to his family. Is he going to go see his third son? I guess we'll talk about that in the coming weeks and in tonight's live stream. And who was at the door? Was it Rue? Was it someone else? And again, where are you all at with Rue? Hands clean. I hate the character. There's no redemption for the character or we want to see her build herself back up to become a better person where she's at right now. So, a lot of stuff I enjoyed, some stuff I really didn't care for, but I want to know your thoughts in the comments, pros, cons, thoughts, and theories for the weeks ahead. And of course, like I said, we're live right now, so click the link in the description. Come join a live discussion. Such a fun time, and I hope to see you all there. If you stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate you. Before you leave, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. I, I look at the analytics, and I appreciate every single subscriber I have, but... 
there's a high percentage of you all that watch these videos and reviews every single week and haven't subscribed so subscribe you know come join the community it's a really fun community and i really appreciate it if you can and of course hit that subscription or hit that notification bell that way you can get out the alert when i get all the new content to you all thank you for watching this review hope you enjoyed it as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel come enjoy the live stream check out my other content we'll catch you all on the next video